So then you got improvements to real or tangible personal property. Improvements are amounts paid for the betterment to your property restoration uh, of your property or work that uh, adopts your property to a new or different use. Now, I think this is having to do with basically the idea that if, if you have your property and you repaired the property or something like that, then it might be, if it was, if it was business property, then you might be able to deduct it. But if you have improvements to the property, then if they're still business related, then you might have to put them on the books as an asset, which means you, if that were the case, you would still possibly be able to get a deduction, but in the form of depreciation as opposed to an expense. Lobbying expenses, so you've got a similar kind of thing. You might think of lobbying expenses as, as similar to like the bribes and kickback things, except they're, except they're kind of a legal type of bribe and kickback type of situation, but it's still clearly political kind of uh, pandering kind of situation. And if you, were if you were to allow the bribing to be expense, that would further, you know, you would expect facilitate people to try to uh, to try to do this political influencing thing. So obviously one of the big problems we have or the scary things in any kind of capitalistic system, the capitalistic system usually works quite well until some of the players on the capitalistic system become so large that they, that they, they can influence the political sphere. And so then you have crony capitalism or the political sphere becomes so powerful that they're able to corrupt some of some of the businesses and then and then and now you've got a crony capitalism kind of situation and that's what needs to be avoided in order to preserve to preserve actual capitalism oh that's a capital suggestion simply cap which is usually going to be most beneficial for the consumer crony capitalism is going to be a way to limit competition favoring a smaller group at the expense of the consumer because they're going to have less you know, productive outputs and costs more. So penalties and fines you pay to a government agency or instrumentally uh, because you broke the law. So now you've got, once again, penalties. If you, if you had the penalties as a result of you breaking the law, the idea would be that they don't want to, we don't want to incentivize the penalties for breaking the law, even though if it happened within a business kind of structure and therefore could be thought of as ordinary and necessary, except for the fact that, they're, that you broke the law and we don't want to incentive. So personal living and family expenses, that one's a pretty clear cut one because those are clearly personal as opposed to business. So you would think that they would not be deductible on the pers on the business side. You would think they probably, for the most part, shouldn't be deductible anywhere because they're personal living expenses and the income tax, you would think in general, not just for the business, but usually an income tax you would think would mean that the deductions you would get would be those that you needed to consume to generate revenue. And so we shouldn't be able, you know, you wouldn't normally be able to deduct personal things, but we note that there are many exceptions to that rule, like the home mortgage interest you deduct for your personal home, possibly on the Schedule A and, and uh, property taxes and whatnot for personable stuff and that kind of stuff. But uh, political contributions, so same kind of thing here, similar kind of argument with the lobbying why it would basically make sense because it's not illegal to give money to political contributions. You can do whatever you want, support whoever you want, but we're worried about the situation of the crony capitalism situation where they're basically just buying uh, politicians or, or you know, in, as part of the normal business practice, which is of course gonna lead to that, that interplay between businesses and the politicians being colluded so you're going to try to stop that it's is it working i don't know if that's working but, but i you see, i can see why you'd want to try to stop that from so settlements or payments related to sexual harassment or sexual abuse if such settlements or payments is subject to a non-disclosure agreement so these kind of things as you know if you follow the news oftentimes happen a lot with these non-disclosure kind of agreements that are related to sexual harassment claims and no one knows if the claims you know half the time the claim might be legitimate or it might be just an illegitimate claim and they just basically come to this agreement and have a payoff kind of situation to not deal with it one way or the other and it's kind of a a sad situation but 
you, you know, they, they don't want to incentivize those as well, you would think. So, non so uh, you also can't deduct attorney fees related to such settlements or payments. Okay.